I entered this campaign six months ago with a 5% lead over all the other candidates because the people wanted me. They knew that with my scientific genius, I would lead them into an era of unprecedented abundance. Now, six months later, with the help of the highest paid image makers in the country, what happens? You have managed to cut my tremendous lead over all my opponents to the point where I now trail Mr. Peter Day by a shocking 12%. Six weeks left in the campaign, gentlemen. I'm listening. Sir, such swings in popular taste are quite normal. When other candidates enter the race and start spreading rumors and raising opposing programs, a swing takes place. We will counteract it. It should not be a cause for worry. Maybe it doesn't worry you, Drake, but it worries me. And I suggest you begin to worry hard. Sir, there is a strong anti-scientific trend amongst the people. They do not understand the complexities of science. They are afraid of losing contact with nature. Now, Mr. Peter Day has latched onto this. You, sir, stand for science, and that's great, of course. But we have to reshape your image, bring you closer to the people, to the everyday feelings of the people. Now, it's coming along fine, really, sir. I'm trying to understand that all you have to recommend to me is longer lines of babies and bigger and bigger doses of pizza, pumpernickel, and apple pie. Sir, it is still the combination that gets the votes. Now, I do understand, sir. You have a rigorous schedule. It also makes me puke, Gertz, as does your advice. Sir, I need time. Your time is running out. Sir, as you know, I have had great reservations about the approach to the campaign of my colleagues. I have insisted on keeping the scientists to the forefront. Well, you are the scientific genius of our age. My colleagues in science got you into trouble. I say use science to get out of trouble. Sir, you have perfected the means of stopping Peter Day. Stop him from being elected, of course. And no, stop him for being born. <laughs> you know what I've got here? A perfect baby. It's really quite simple. You just, uh, well, you do something rather to the parents' genes and um, perfect baby. The man who discovered that uh, something or other is David Arlington Zack. And he's running for president on the strength of it. His platform, a perfect future through science. Now, who would vote against perfection? Who would vote against Zach? Certainly a man who's done so much good for mankind couldn't possess a touch of evil. outfits, and finally an end to time. Mr. Zack, I promise you, will have an equally Spartan plot to get rid of his opponent. Let's look in again on the year 2020. Man's already born. How do you prevent something happen that's already happening? It's perfectly possible. Robertson, you really have flipped out from the rigors of this campaign. You need a complete rest. It would seem that your colleagues are completely baffled, Mr. Robertson. Well, naturally, sir, they're not scientists. And are not familiar with your latest scientific achievement. The time machine, gentlemen. This machine has been thoroughly tested. I myself have spent many happy moments witnessing historic events. You see, it gives us the enormous power to rewrite history. To eliminate the mistakes of the past and so help curb their unfortunate influence on the present. And I think we can all agree that Mr. Peter Day is certainly a mistake of the past, can't we, gentlemen? 
course, you have a plan of operation, Robertson. Oh, yes, sir. And the simplest way to see that a man is never born is to see that his parents never meet. That's certainly plausible enough. The machine will take a passenger from here to the exact time and place where Peter Day's father met his future bride. And what did you plan to have happen then? Sir. Here are photos of Day's parents taken at the age when they met. Also a photograph of the restaurant where they met. Its exact location is known. You do your homework well. Oh, yes, sir. I'd never make a suggestion without suitable preparation. One detail. The exact time of the meeting? Uh, 12.40 p.m., July 11, 1972. Oh, no miracle, sir. Just facts. All facts from the autobiography of Peter Day's father. He served as a general during the War of Attrition, achieved high political office. The few human moments of his life were treasured. He recorded in some detail how he picked up his wife. Picked up his wife? Yes. A love at first sight kind of thing. That is an extraordinary coincidence. Sir, your biography contains details of a similar meeting between your parents. She was waiting on a street corner. He drove by, nearly knocked her down. Stopped to check to see that she was all right, and uh, they never separated. Well, now, what's your plan? So far, it's excellent. Uh, we, we're waiting for the two lovers to have their fatal meeting. We're on the exact spot now. The lovers must never meet, so that Peter Day will never be born. Sounds like murder to me. I'm not at all. You can't murder a man who doesn't exist. Don't you understand? Peter Day will never exist. The whole idea is crazy. And it's a vicious mind that planned it. By eliminating the second candidate, you eliminate the whole necessity for the campaign. Or the need to vote. With only one candidate, why vote at all? Exactly the perfect solution. And since there will not be a campaign, there will be no further need for your services, gentlemen. But, sir... But, sir, that's not... Permanently. <laughs> is astonishingly balanced, Robertson. Peter Day owes his existence to an accidental meeting, yet his non-existence must be scientifically planned. You must understand that it's not enough that the mission be perfectly timed. The action to take place must also suit the mood and the emotion that we're seeking to be fulfilled in that little cafe. It was a moment of love. Therefore, a moment of love must take place. That is the historical emotional necessity. And yet, the meeting between Day's father and the girl must never take place. Everything depends on selecting the man with just the right qualities to fulfill that moment of love. To a greater degree than Day's father or any other man in the world could. Of course, sir, I understand that. The man must be completely irresistible to women. Magnetic with the power of his sexuality. Charming in manner, handsome in face and form. Tall, broad-shouldered, slim-waisted, with powerful thighs, and I have just the man. Sir, I assure you, I can accomplish this mission for you. <laughs> you? It's all I've thought about. I have every move planned. I'm sure you have big plans. No, Robinson, you're far too clever to be let out of my sight. Come in, Leeds. You were something of me, sir? Sir, I urge you not to entrust this to an untrained person. Oh, don't worry about his training. We'll pick it up in no time. But, sir, you cannot rely on someone's... Oh, yes, I can. I can rely on leads. Can I, leads? Implicitly, sir. For whatever you may command. Yes, you guessed it, Robertson. Do you mind showing him the proof? Not at all, sir. It is somewhat a matter of pride to me. <laughs> Leeds is the one creation I've never revealed to anyone, not even to you. He's completely irresistible to all women. He can supply the maximum magnetism on demand. Meet the world's greatest lover, Tom Leeds, humanoid. This 1972 costume. Well, it's not a costume, it's what they wore. It suits you. I think so too, sir. I didn't know robots could think. I am not a robot. I am a humanoid. 
Of course, I was descended from the robots, and I am proud to say it. It is known that you are descended from the apes, yet I would not assume that you are an ape. You are a human being, Dr. Robertson, are you not? I am a humanoid. I apologize. Well, now that we've got that cleared up, let's get on with the briefing. That is the spot where the machine will come down. It's at the corner of Elm and Pine. Isn't that the corner where we are now? Exactly. The time machine moves through time, not space. The machine will land at the same physical spot where it started from. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Very simple to understand. Those buildings were torn down in 1993 when the building we were in was built. What else? But that's not Lino's, the cafe where the days met. That is, we'll almost meet. It's at the corner of Fifth and Wallace, six blocks and 40 years from here. Walk straight south, turn one block, five blocks straight ahead, we'll put you in front of it. The girl, how will I know her? Hmm, it feels very good. I believe it'll work out fine if she responds to me as strongly as I do, just to her photograph. This is your time machine, watch. It will synchronize with the panel clock in the machine. Check it on your arrival. The time of the meeting was 12.40 p.m. The meeting took place only once. When you leave here, you will have only one chance to prevent it. You must become the man the girl chooses. Leave the girl to me, sir. I will take care of your problem. You rang, sir? I certainly didn't, Miss Prentice. I'm sorry. I'm sure I was needed here. I... Can we get back to the briefing, gentlemen? Do you have anything to add to the briefing, Robertson? No, sir. Then the time has come for Leeds to reach back into the past and help us to change the future. Are you sure about the operation of the machine? Absolutely. This is your last chance to ask questions. I recorded all your instructions the first time you went through it. They feel very secure. Keep one thing in mind. The year is not 2020. Slight adjustments may have to be made to the woman of 1972. Be careful in your first approach. Test yourself, Brad. I wish you bon voyage. My political future is in your hands. Your future is safe with me, sir. Let's get up to the mine, Craig. Inside, he should have landed on the other side of the door. You did this. You want to direct this mission. I did not, sir. I swear it. My calculations were correct. The room must have been bigger than we thought. If he doesn't get there, my political future is dead. Those buildings you see were torn down in 1993, when the building we're in was built. that, my clever scientist. You don't understand my humanoid. 
I have given him the ability to activate a memory bank and thereby to initiate action. He's not just a simple kind of robot, you know. His brain core is almost human. It won't be too long, and that will be my final achievement. Great. Have you any idea what Leeds is doing now? I'll tell you. He's moving the machine a few feet so that the next time he enters 1972, he'll be outside the building instead of inside where you put him. I imagine you're correct, sir. You damn right I'm correct. <laughs> Save yourself that worry if you let me go. You don't have much respect for my insight into humans. You don't trust a single human being, do you? Do you? No, I guess not, sir. Of course not. You're a scientist. Science doesn't trust a lot. As scientists, we have to know what to expect when two forces interact. Leads his reaction is a program. You know what to expect. seconds before 1240. It should give him just about enough time to uh, break the contact between Peter Day's father and the girl and get himself back inside the machine where we can see him by 1243. Do you agree, Robertson? Yeah, it sounds about right, sir. You. We just happen to be going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Then why don't you pick yourself another street? I was informed that this was the most direct route to Natalina's. Are you going there? No, thank you. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. It's just that uh, I have to be there on time. It's very important. I have a rendezvous at Natalina's. A rendezvous? I've only seen that word in books. I, I don't know that people actually talk that way. Where are you from? From? I, I'm from here. Oh, from here. And you don't know the way to Natalina. Oh, what's the matter with me? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I used to live here. But things have changed a lot since then. Yeah. They put up buildings so fast. Stay away a year and you hardly recognize the place. This is so nice. I'm sorry I was so rude. Actually, I'm going right past Natalina. It's just that I thought, well, you know, most of the guys in the city, they think that... Any girl is waiting just for them. You know, you really are something. Flattery will get you to Natalina's. I thought you had to be somewhere on time. Oh, I do. I must. I, I really must. Is she pretty? Very. Well, not like you. Actually, I haven't met her yet. I mean... Um, I've never met anyone like you. Something's very wrong. I've never felt like this before. Come on. I don't want you to be late. Uh, excuse me, Miss. We, we're not usually permitted to do this, but 
A gentleman up by our request permission to join you? Oh, no, I couldn't. That is, I don't think I should. He is very charming. Well, just out of curiosity, which gentleman? Well, there's Natalino's. Goodbye. Maybe tomorrow? I'm, I'm glad we talked. You won't change your mind. Someone, were you not? I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> yes, I guess I was. Of course you were. Well, now that I'm here, may I stay? Well, as long as you're here. Peter Day must be feeling a little peculiar about her. Miserable fool probably wonders what's happening to her. <laughs> Another round in the ongoing battle between good and evil. The case of David Arlington Zack. His evil was his own undoing. Zack himself was never born. So none of his inventions were ever invented, including the time machine, which disappeared from the spot, leaving Leeds happily programmed for 1972. Oh, um, if you're curious about the election, the candidates are now Peter Day, and running against him, a young scientist. Right, our Mr. Roberts. He arranged matters very neatly for himself. So, until we meet again, this is Anthony Quayle saying, there is a touch of evil in all of us. dreams.